the 2012 Telstra Business Woman of the Year is Caroline Crisma. Yay for me! <laughs> um, so I just borrowed something um, off Anna's speech before, I hope you don't mind. I'm very, she might have had a gold medal, but I'm very proud to stand before you as the 2012 Telstra Australian Business Woman of the Year. <laughs> I, I love all of the amazing finalists that I've met and got to know through this process and I love that Nancy from the Northern Territory just came up to me in the corridor and told me that I'm deadly, um, which I thought was gorgeous. <laughs> um, I've now given four speeches and so I have covered a lot of different things, however I'm never short of a word, so <laughs> I thought I could um, entertain you with a few other stories. <laughs> So in the short time um, since I won the Victorian Businesswoman of the Year, um, I have been invited to some pretty amazing different dinners. So I keep saying the calibre of my dinner party invitations has skyrocketed. The first one um, was to um, go for dinner with the Prime Minister to Flower Drum, which is a really swanky restaurant in Melbourne. And I actually got there and um, luck happened. I, they sat me next to her and I got to spend the night talking about the things that I'm passionate about about working mums and it was just an amazing night and it was just an honour to think the awards have given me that. I was then <laughs> invited <laughs> to, this one's even better so hold it, um, I was then invited to Admiralty House by the Governor General, um, Her Excellency Quinton Brass, to have dinner with Prince Charles and Camilla when they were here, I know, it gets better, um, <laughs> no that was the best party invitation. Um, and um, as I keep saying, I'm really fascinated, Telstra, how you're going to beat the dinner invitations now that I've actually won the whole thing. So I'm thinking maybe the Pope or Obama, you know, I'm up for it. <laughs> so um, I thought, you know, as I said, I've, I've spoken about a lot of things, but maybe just telling you about meeting Prince Charles would be a, quite a good story. So um, when the invitation came, instead of telling us what to wear or how to curtsy, they said, um, and they have all official names, thank goodness, no one, just don't dob me in that I didn't use all the highnesses, but they said, um, could I let them know what I'm interested in, what my passions are, and a, a bit more about me. So I submitted my little paragraph, and I got there, and um, you get properly announced, and I came out, and I got to shake Prince Charles's hand, and he said, I am so excited to meet you, and I can't wait to hear all about Carmen's. I almost fell over, and so... <laughs> I then I'm standing around the lawn and he comes up to me and he said, you know, tell me about Carmen's. And I said, well, you know, we're, we're listed in Sainsbury's in the UK and we've actually just got a trial recently at Tesco. He said, that is so fantastic. He said, you know, I can't believe that you can make a product and sell it over to Tesco in the UK. And he said, I'd love to try one of your muesli bars one day. I said, well, actually... <laughs> out I popped my one muesli bar. <laughs> and... <laughs> As my husband knows, I had to decide that night, as I did tonight, whether I was going to bring a muesli bar or a comb. And I dramed in the hotel room and I said, better go to the muesli bar, I'll use my fingers on my hair. And um, so, <laughs> Prince Charles stood there with his gin and tonic and his muesli bar and he, he chatted away and asked me lots of questions and then when he went inside to sit down he got his help mans, I don't know what you officially call them, and he said, now make sure you give me that muesli bar back tomorrow because I want that tomorrow. And the man said, yes, sir. And um, so we sat down and over dinner, you know, sure enough, I get there and I'm sitting one seat away from him. And so we talked, and I had like three bits of party conversation I'd prepared, which was exhausted by then. I didn't have another hour and a half of Prince Charles small talk. So we're kind of, you know, I'm, I'm trying to chat about different things. And um, Poe, um, um, Quinton Price gave a beautiful introduction and she said, Australians aren't really into showing off. It's not our style at all. However, tonight we've, I've bought, I've invited 16 young Australians who I think are the shining light of Australia's future and I wanted to show you how amazing I think that um, our future will be and, you know, spend time with these people. It was a gorgeous speech. It's on the internet if you're interested in looking at it. So Poe was talking about, uh, I asked Prince Charles about what he'd enjoyed the most and he said he loved going to Coonwarra to the wineries and Poe said, isn't it great going to these sort of country towns where you can just kind of be a dag? And he looked kind of amused <laughs> and then I went, oh my goodness. So I said, you don't know what a dag is, do you? He said, could you explain? 
So I then had to tell Prince Charles that when a sheep goes to the toilet, that's what hangs off their backside, and he thought that was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. <laughs> so then he stood up and he gave a, a, a speech, and he said, you know, I've met the most, and I'm so honoured to be here, and he said, you know, I've met people like Carolyn Creswell, who has makes muesli bars. She's sending them over to the UK. You know, she's pulled one out of her little tiny handbag and given it to me. You know, how entrepreneurial is that? And I think that shows the spirit of Australia. So then, oh no, you know, that was all gorgeous. So then Camilla comes up to me later and says, I just want you to know that I'll be having half of that muesli bar tomorrow. I'm going to make him share. So isn't that, that's a true story. Um, So in the interview, um, getting back to the real world now, um, in the Telstra interviews yesterday, they asked me to answer two questions. Why me and what message would I like to get across? I said, well, they're easy. I can, I can tell you that straight off. Firstly, why me? Because I could be you. I don't come from money or power or a business family. I come from the checkout at Coles. And I feel proof that I'm an Aussie success story and this is what it can really look like. So I hope that with this award, I'm able to inspire other young people that it's not about necessarily being the highest IQ. You can do what you want if you set your mind to it. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> um, what's my message? So, you know, what could I do to, to um, use this award to influence something that I would like to change? And I said, you know, that I proudly stand before you all tonight and in front of the judges to say that I have a full-time job, I sit on several boards and I am a good mother and I know that I'm a good mother and I think that it is absolutely not a mutually exclusive thing and we don't question working dads that you can work full-time and be a good father but we constantly, secretly, quietly question working mums that they can do the same. I don't think it's necessarily the corporations. In fact, I think workplaces are really coming along in leaps and bounds. I think it's schools, and I think it's school mums, and I think it's, you know, the, the society. And uh, to quote the castle, I think it's just the vibe of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all do what we can to challenge, challenge, and challenge. I promise I will do all that I can, and I hope that you will too. Now, um, something I learned years ago at Carmen's, I, I received a phone call and I had um, half of my business taken by one of the supermarkets overnight and it took me a long time to get all those products listed back in and from that situation happening to me, I have learned to be totally a numbers girl. I know what numbers, I know off the top of my head everything that went through the cash registers at Coles and Woolies last week and the problem children, anything under six units, I spend my life trying to make sure that I can get them above it. So um, tonight there are 37 finalists and you've heard six speeches. So my numbers tell me there's 31 unread speeches that are sitting in handbags in this room tonight. And to reiterate what I said in Victoria, I think that's a real shame. People go to a lot of effort to write a good speech and I encourage you to take home, uh, you know, for the support crew to take home the, your finalist and make sure that you have a glass of champagne and listen to that speech and celebrate that what they wanted to say because I think it's a shame not to hear them otherwise. <laughs> And um, on, a, on a more light-hearted statistical note, I think that there is more blow dries in this room in, per square metre than there are anywhere else in Australia tonight. So I think that we should also uh, recognise how fabulous everyone looks and what an effort we've all gone to to be here. <laughs> and finally, um, thank you again to the Carmen's family, for everyone who stood up before. Um, for making my dream come true. I just thought a few people might stand up. I didn't imagine more than half the room would and um, I was shocked. So thank you as well for supporting me. Um, I appreciate it enormously. I don't do what I do for accolades or recognition, but I have to say this feels really fantastic. <laughs> I, um, 
I never won any trophies at school. I actually married a man who came into the house with boxes of trophies and he goes, what are your trophies? I said, I've never won a trophy. <laughs> um, and I was always a little jealous of those that did. And now I've won the trophy of all trophies in my eyes and no one can ever take that away from me. So Pete, feel free on my, um, on my tombstone to add 2012 Telstra Businesswoman of the Year. <laughs> I love it. I'm enormously proud and thank you everyone so much.